Uh, I do think that artistry in any scholarly discipline has an ethical responsibility, a moral responsibility, to examine our own time as well as the past times. We're living in the moment, and to simply reproduce works of art, to tell their own story in their own moment, and not to engage with how, with how they're working now would be to violate our responsibilities. So the idea that a scholar can simply dispassionately describe something that's criminal or violent or abhorrent and stand back from it seems to me is not a, in this day and age particularly, is not a viable position to take. I was trying to understand where a particular imago, a certain image, comes from. The case of the Abu Ghraib photographs, um, these photographs appeared and they stunned and startled everyone who saw them. Startled because of the shocking nature of them, the cruelty of them, and particularly the aberrant quality, that is that the tortures consisted uh, in large part, or in part anyway, of having figures stripped naked, having them wear leashes, uh, women's underwear placed over their faces, uh, piles of naked figures. Where could this come from? How, why would it be that American soldiers, one understands what torture is, and later on the United States would engage in plenty of torture, particularly waterboarding and other things, that, other tortures that had been conventionally used. But where the idea of dressing up these figures in this peculiar way and stripping them naked in this, in this way? So I start to notice the resemblances between those photographs and works of art from the past including Francisco Goya, um, the Corazon uh, that uh, Goya's figures sometimes wear, was like that worn by a famous figure who's made to stand out a box uh, in one of the Abu Ghraib photographs, or the nakedness. And it struck me that the images of Abu Ghraib were eroticized, as if somehow the figures in those pictures were participating in an erotic game, taking pleasure in their own chastisement. And then I realized that the representation of prisoners as being somehow complicit in their own torture, their own punishment, is a long-standing trope and image that goes back to the early origins of Greco-Roman antiquity, if not before. So I began to trace that imagery, and I took it back to the Pergamon altarpiece and figures of Athena, who is crushing Alcyonius, and Alcyonius is shown in a position of ecstasy. And then I wanted to trace that further. I looked at figures of uh, synagogia and ecclesia in the Middle Ages, where synagogia representing the Jewish religion, which is defeated, if you will, by ecclesia, the Christian religion. Um, synagogia is shown swooning. Her head is covered by a snake, knocking off her crown. She's shown to suffer, to be tormented. But it's a beautiful and uh, sensuous image. And then I'd follow that imagery through into the 18th and 19th century and sell on nudes of various kinds, uh, images of prisoners. And then into the late 19th century, and early 20th century, in films by, see, uh, by, uh, by uh, DeMille uh, and other Hollywood filmmakers, where again you see uh, figures who are being capt captives and tortured figures who are somehow enjoying it. And then even to more recent films, uh, uh, 007 films, Casino Royale, where you see uh, Daniel Craig, who's tortured, naked, beautiful body, and he seems to be engaging in it, loving the work, almost celebrating his own chastisement. That's the imagery that I found in those photographs of Abu Ghraib. So the purpose of the book was to trace this kind of imagery and the origins of that, if you will, the imago, the, those uh, notions of showing these figures who seem to be participating in their own torture. It's a way of covering your own solving your own conscience for what you're doing by making it seem as if the prisoners are enjoying what they're experiencing. It's a horrific thing to do. It's rather common in torture scenarios. Uh, you find that kind of scenario represented in the work of Leon Golub, uh, Sukho, and other contemporary artists. Um, so I wanted to expose that so that it could no longer be used quite so easily in media uh, in the present. There's no redeemed violence there. There's nothing about the aestheticization of violence. Uh, it's a picture in which he purposely represses color. Uh, Picasso, who's a brilliant colorist, represses color because he's dealing with a subject that has to be told straight as what it was. Uh, the violence, the destruction of a body, of the bonds between uh, a mother and child. Uh, the life of animals is given as much validity as the life of people. Horses, uh, bulls destroyed by uh, bombs, Nazi, uh, bombs working for Francisco Franco, the fascist. Uh, all of that is revealed in that picture. And uh, again, to be able to reveal that, to tell the story, to use 
women's bodies, animal bodies, and to offer the spectator no sense that it's in any way redeemed. There's nothing redeemed, redeeming, redemptive about that picture, even though it's a gigantic imagery.